Hey everyone, Lance here. This is my first look and thoughts of the Mantis Venus eGPU enclosure and it'll be being used with my 2017 MacBook Pro. Here is the box the Mantis Venus comes in. It's decently large in size and when we open that up we have this nice hard cell foam that keeps the Mantis Venus nice and protected during delivery. So in the box we can see it there. So if we lift this out, it does have a decent bit of weight to it. We can see that grilled front side. So let's place this down here. You also get in the box a power cable. However, this didn't come with a power cable I could use locally as I had to get this delivered to New Zealand via U-Shop. But I do have a power cable to use with it. And you also get a small accessory bag. Doesn't really come with much. It comes with instructions, of course. It also comes with a Thunderbolt 3 cable. And with eGPUs, the shorter the cable, the better. So this is probably perfect length unless you need a longer cable because you're limited on space. It also comes with a bag with a couple of screws and cable ties. And lastly, this is my first complaint here. It comes with the feet that stick onto the bottom of the Mantis Venus. I'm not too sure why these weren't already pre-installed as sitting it on the desk like this it kind of moves around and it's already starting to get a little bit scratched on the bottom there. The Mantis Venus comes with a SFX 550 watt gold rated power supply. It's got an expansion board which provides two front USB 3.0 connections three rear USB 3.0 connections, a gigabit ethernet jack, and an internal SATA 3 connection, and there is also a mounting point for a two and a half inch hard drive or SSD. This is really good news for people with the smaller storage capacity MacBooks, such as a 256 gigabyte flash storage drive. And one thing to note around that though, is there was no included SATA cable with the Venus. And of course, inside there is also a full-size 16x PCI Express slot that supports double-width cards. The main board of the Mantis Venus uses a TI-83 USB-C controller chip, meaning that this has native support for Mac OS and is a certified eGPU enclosure. Unlike some of the older Thunderbolt 3 enclosures which had the TI-82 chip that required a script to get them detected by the Mac operating system. When connected to a Thunderbolt 3 Mac, it can provide 87 watts of power to that system via the same connector that connects everything else in this beautiful box to the Mac. This means you have very little cables laying around, which is a plus for those people that pride themselves on a clean setup. The Venus can also provide a maximum of 375 watts to the connected graphics card you choose to install. In my case, I have a Gigabyte RX 580 that I'll be using in here. Since the power supply is a standard SFX power supply, it can be replaced by the many other SFX power supplies that are out there on the market. It's got a decent amount of connections, including two 6 plus 2 power connections, a 24 pin power connector for the internal board, which enables a couple of cool features which I'll come back to later, and it also has a SATA and a Molex connector, obviously for the internal drive you'd be able to run in there, or internal hard drive or SSD I should say. The power supply gets pretty hot as it's got quite a small fan, and that fan has very little room to suck any air in, especially when there's a graphics card installed. The Akitio node has a fan facing the back of the case against the wall, but the back of the case has a grill so it can suck air from the outside in. When I get around to doing it, I will be replacing the power supply in here with a Silverstone SFX L fully modular power supply, which I have here. This is what I used in my Akedio Thunder 2 eGPU, which I've taken out of commission now that I've got the Mantis Venus. Now I should quickly say, that the Silverstone power supply is still an 80 plus gold rated power supply, but it is only 500 watts, which should still be plenty for what I need it for. The main benefits of this are it's slightly longer than that SFX power supply, meaning it has a full 120 millimeter fan, 
versus the very small one inside the default power supply. It's also fully modular and has black cables so it should look a little bit nicer in the case. Obviously you can see the case has a really nice design aesthetic that fits in really well with Apple's product line and I think looks very similar or like an evolution of the older Mac Pro towers. The case can be fully disassembled which is pretty handy but I don't see myself ever taking more than the front panel off. Now when you remove the front panel it simply pulls off and it has these locating pins along the surface. That's really handy if you ever want to change graphics cards or maybe troubleshoot any problems you're facing. However, the rear panel does need to be unscrewed, which you may want to do if you're wanting to mount an SSD or a hard drive against that bracket on the back of the case. The Venus has two 4-pin fan headers on the main board. It also has lots of other connections and headers on the PCB, but I have no clue what they are used for, so I'm just completely ignoring them. There is a fan in the bottom of the case, it looks to be about an 80mm fan and it's exhausting downwards, which to me seems a bit strange. I would opt to flip it over and have it as an intake because you know how hot air rises? Well you want to be bringing in cold air from outside the case rather than exhausting hot air downwards. And with the power supply, with a bigger fan, if I install this Silverstone power supply, I'll be able to get air in the bottom towards the front, it's going to be pulled through and exhausted out the back of the power supply. In theory, that little change should improve the airflow and reduce the temperatures inside the Mantis Venus. I quickly touched on earlier the fact that having a 24 pin power connector would be pretty cool and add a couple of extra features. Now that is because it's got a proper power circuit. Anyone that's got experience with other eGPUs will know that you normally have to jump that 24 pin power connector, which means it thinks it's always connected to a system that's powered on, which means you've got to switch it off at the power supply. Having that 24 pin power connector means when you shut down the Mac, the Mantis Venus also powers off. And with the new 2017 MacBook Pros, an awesome feature is simply by opening the lid, the Mac powers on. Same with connecting the charger, it'll power on. So the awesome benefit of this is when I sit down at my desk, I'd normally plug in the charger. All I need to do is plug in the Thunderbolt 3 connection from the Mantis Venus and the Mac turns on and the eGPU is enabled. It'll boot, it'll be displaying on the big screen behind me and that's all I need to do. With High Sierra, of course, there's direct support for eGPUs, which makes all of that very easy. It takes the exact same amount of time as connecting my charger. Or maybe I've been using the Mac and I've shut it down. Well, when I power it on, it all powers up again. Or even when I open the lid, if I've closed it, it'll all power up and it'll all be ready to go in a matter of seconds. Now obviously as well as all of those features, you guys are probably interested in graphics benchmarks. Now it should perform pretty similarly to other Thunderbolt 3 eGPUs, but I do have a video where I tested this versus an Akedio Thunder 2, both with an RX 480 and RX 580, and compared them to the Radeon Pro 564GB discrete GPU in my MacBook Pro. I'll make sure I post the link in the description to that video for you guys if you are interested in graphics numbers. This is so much more than a graphics stock, so it's not just graphics performance that matter with this guy here. There's obviously all of that other expansion including the SATA 3 connection. So I'm going to get in close and we're going to make sure that the USB ports truly are USB 3. We're going to make sure that that Ethernet jack does run at gigabit speeds and I'm also going to put the Samsung 850 EVO drive from my PC back there in here and run some disk speed tests to see what kind of disk speeds that we're getting through Thunderbolt 3. Now we're in close guys, I wanted to show you that the USB ports truly do work at USB 3.0 speeds, that being 5 gigabits per second. So if we go down to USB, we can see USB 3.1 hub, we can then see under that tree, USB 3.0 hub, then below that the micro SD card reader that I've connected, which shows us the speed of 5 gigabits per second. So that's what we should expect to see. Now the other thing I wanted to show you guys was if we go to system preferences, then network, 
I go to add an interface, there's no Ethernet or USB Ethernet to be seen at all. So what we need to do is actually manually install the drivers for the Ethernet jack. So there were some very clever people that found it uses an A6 chip. That chip is the AX88179 which we can see down here. So we want to come to this page which is the A6 website and the specific page for that chip. I'll put a link to this in the description by the way. We want to scroll to the bottom and we can see drivers here. So we want to download this one here, Apple Mac 10.6 and above drive, driver installer. Bleh. Once that's downloaded we want to go to finder and I've already downloaded and extracted it here. We want to go in here and before we go any further we want to make sure that we've got system integrity protection disabled. If you don't know how to do that do a quick google, it's one terminal command in recovery mode. We then want to run this which is going to mount this here and then we want to run this package and we'll put our admin password in continue installation and it's installing. Now it will restart once the installation is completed and then we'll have the ethernet port enabled and I'll show you guys that it does in fact work at gigabit speeds. Once we're back up and running I'll also run a black magic disk speed test on the drive I've put in there which by the way I opted not to put my Samsung 850 boot drive from my PC in as I found a spare SanDisk Extreme 120 gig SSD that I had laying around that I've chucked in there. So I'm going to restart and I'll see you guys soon. Now we're all back up and running so let's bring up system preferences and I'm going to show you guys that once we enter network we can see that the driver name is here for Ethernet and it's connected. To confirm that it is running at gigabit speed, let's go to advanced and click hardware and we can see 1000 base T, confirming that we're running at gigabit speed. So let's click OK. We can also see if we go to add an interface, that interface is there, AX88179 USB 3.0 to gigabit Ethernet. So that's exactly what we want. So we're going to cancel out of here and then I'm going to load up Black Magic Disk Speed Test. And we're going to select the drive that I've got in there. Now this just so happens to be called Mantis Venus and it's got nothing on it. I've named it that of course. And then we're going to go OK and we're going to start the speed test. Now I'm not going to do proper benchmarks but you guys can get a good idea here of the sort of performance I'm getting. So continuously running this I get on average about 130 megabytes per second on the right and about 350 megabytes per second on the read. Now this drive is advertised at having a 550 megabyte per second read and a 510 megabyte per second write. So we've got a bottleneck at some point in this setup but it's plenty fast enough for what I'm going to use it for which is just basically as an external hard drive to store things that I don't want to keep on my Mac or aren't critical to have when I'm on the go. One thing I'd like to point out is that the space grey of this isn't consistent with the space grey of my 2017 MacBook. However you can't really blame Mantis for this as it seems that space grey doesn't even seem to be consistent between Apple's own products themselves so I mean it's kind of hard to get that perfect. In my opinion this is the perfect docking station and eGPU enclosure for the new MacBook Pros. With their lack of ports this fills the gap you need while also adding external graphics to the system. I'm finding it very convenient to simply connect one connector and everything is ready to go. And that's about all I wanted to say about the Mantis Venus eGPU enclosure. I hope you enjoyed this video and it's maybe helped you make a decision on whether you want to buy one of these. Or maybe you're like myself and you just like watching these kinds of videos because you want to know all there is to know about external GPUs in conjunction with a Mac. Either way, like the video if you enjoyed it and feel free to subscribe down below if you want to see more eGPU content in the future. I've also got some PC content coming so stick around for that. I'll also post links to my Instagram and Twitter down in the description below, so also check me out there. But hey, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.